Brothers and sisters, we, are re we really know and it is apparent that we are in the last days right now. And God in His Word has given so many warnings, so many signs and cues. He does not want to leave us lost in fatal security. And here in Matthew 24, there is one that I would like to emphasize this afternoon that the Lord has revealed this past, past two months, being in quarantine inside the Adventist University of the Philippines. It's in Matthew 24, verse 12 and 13, it says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. This has touched my heart and it has crushed my heart, my brothers and sisters. Because many times in my Christian life, I have observed that my love grew cold. I, following God has become mere formalism. I go to church because I want to attend a program. I go to revival because I want to feel good. But I don't have the love of Jesus. My love has grown cold for God and for my fellow men. Why is this the case? It is because preceding that, because iniquity shall abound. We question God saying, Lord, if you are so good, why is the world like this? If you are so good, why are many innocent people suffering? If you are so good, why is the world about to collapse and destroy? If you are a God of love, why is this happening? We ask that question to God. I hear so many asking that question to God. But here in Matthew 24, we see that it was prophesied even in 2 Timothy chapter 3. I urge you after this video to read those, those verses in your, by yourself or with a, a partner. Iniquity shall abound. This is prophecy. In the last days, the love of many shall grow cold because iniquity shall abound. And in the Christian church, this is also our apparent danger, my brothers and sisters. It is also an apparent danger that our love will grow cold because we will focus on the iniquity that abounds around us. Once we take our eyes off of Jesus and focus on the iniquity abiding around us, our love will grow cold. Now, let me ask you a heart-searching question. Has your love for Jesus and your fellow men grown cold? Did you take your eyes off Jesus? My brothers and sisters, the promise though here is given, God does not leave us in helplessness. But he gave us the assurance, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. The word, if we hear the word endure, it means we, it has to go through something not easy. God never promised us an easy life, but he promised us strength to endure that life. Right now, brothers and sisters, ch checking our hearts. Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2 says it says here wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of promise witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus did not look at the iniquity abounding all around him. He had all reasons to destroy the world. He was tortured, crucified. He experienced pain that we could, not ev we could even have not imagined. But he was looking to be reunited with us. He endured the pain, looking at the joy in the end. Right now, where are you looking at, brothers and sisters? Are you looking at the iniquity that abides in our world right now? And as a result, has your love for God and your love for your fellow men grown cold? Or are you looking for Jesus? Are you excited to be reunited with the one who loves you the most? That question is up to you to answer. The Spirit is being poured out in these last days. And when He, he touches your heart, please, I plead and I, I, and I plead for you, my brothers and sisters, 
follow and respond to the Spirit's call.